Kathy Vick, Deeply Awake Chats 2017, and uh, very soon you'll be seeing sunshine. She can't seem to stay too far away from me, so you'll be seeing her. Um, oh, here it comes. Uh, I want to talk to you today about some things that I've been noticing energetically, and uh, I cannot separate what's happening energetically with what's happening internally and um, intellectually and emotionally and uh, in my life walk. So uh, I've been having a little bit of uh, confusion as to how to present these things. So I would like very much to explain what I see as uh, energetics and what's going on now and what I feel is going on in the future when I just project. And then I want to talk about the translation of that and then I'll be complete. Uh, first of all, uh, I've, I've been noticing an increase in heat waves that go through my, uh, basically my trunk, um, focusing mainly in the heart area, but it's, and it's just a magnificent heat. I used to call it a dry heat because that's what it was. It, it felt so overpowering and so hot that I felt it was dry. But um, for about the last year or so, when I feel this heat, I also feel a sense of swelling. I feel like there's engorgement, and um, and this is an internal process. So um, it makes sense with increased heat that there would be increased blood flow. What I understand, though, is what I've seen the last couple of weeks is these massive heat waves are associated directly with waves of nausea. And um, the nausea is pretty much the kind that just makes me stop and uh, makes me just need to, to uh, take a deep breath. Usually breathing is enough for me to break a nausea spell without having to barf. I mention all of this because I have had what are called, what I've labeled vagal um, responses or vagal uh, stimulations which have resulted in my passing out uh, but have always been triggered by spiritual events and are associated with profound heat uh, debilitating short periods of bursts of nausea sometimes associated with vomiting and purging um, and then uh, sweating and um, the, and they're very very big events, and, they, and then I will pass out. The, what I came to understand about the vagal response is that you know the the vagus nerve is the tenth, I believe, cranial nerve. Oh oh, two touch and feel a girl's vagina cavity. V vagal ten. So um, this is a nerve that goes from the base of the brain all the way down to the uh, pelvic floor through the spine. The vagal nerve is the super highway and, uh, and it's in the process of restructuring. Our, our spinal column is uh, adjusting, our nervous systems are adjusting, and our physical, the nexus of our, of our, um, of the expression of our neurologic reality is through our spine. So, um, if you're having nausea, if you're having, I, I was concerned when, with these uh, periods increasing the last couple of weeks, I thought, well, maybe I'm, maybe I'm really sick if I'm having heat and nausea and it just goes away and I'm not passing out. But no, I, 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 I really do get that this is just an opening up and a further tinkering. So that's one thing I've noticed, but I've also noticed an incredible change in my thoughts. Wow. And in, in the uh, clarity um, and availability of my guidance, the quality of the guidance has not changed. That's something that doesn't change. And it's something that I trust uh, how could I not? It's the only thing I do trust, to be honest with you, is this internal guidance. The world of men and the world of society and the world of daily stuff, that's not the place for me to go looking for uh, permanence, 
for certainty, for um, reproducibility even. And I know that that's pretty much opposite of the way that a lot of people behave. Their physical, sensate world is what they really, really, really believe in and trust. And this airy-fairy stuff is what they don't believe in and don't trust. If I can't see it, it doesn't exist. Okay, well, I have that neurologic issue of it, it, out of sight, out of mind. Um, it's true. And if I'm surrounded by people who have no interest in spirituality or God or anything other than paying their freaking bills and pleasing their freaking spouse, um, I usually can't have really easy access to a lot of the esoteric stuff. It seemed, it seemed to not be available if other people didn't hold it. That's changed. I'm remembering I'm remembering who I am, what I am. I'm aware of uh, multiple dimensions and multiple realities while I'm pushing the stroller, while I'm visiting the bathroom, while I'm talking to my kid. But what I'm noticing is this, um, there's a tearing, or not a tearing, there's a I'm more aware of the, the different worlds and the, and the different realities that are available. Last summer I had um, the beginning of this process begin and it was uh, very intense and very uncomfortable. Things that were in my environment, visually, consciousness-wise, the whole time, I had never noticed. And then last summer I began to notice and I began to take offense. So I had about a year of just being uncomfortable and being triggered a lot. Um, I can remember being at the Walmart last summer and seeing a, a little TV screen pumping in uh, ads and crap about the NFL and it's the same same nonsense you see at the gas station now when you pump gas. You can't even get away from the blah blah while you pump gas. And uh, and I I didn't I noticed it. And I took uh, umbrage, and I uh, became resentful, and um, I uh, dealt with a, a highly domestic, well, a, a highly violent domestic situation for um, a few months as part of my work. And this was also very, very invasive, very physically and emotionally um, affecting. And through, and then I had a series of uh, events where it was in my face. People who had been um, violent toward me, without cause, in the past, were back, and they were wreaking havoc, and causing damage, and really making things hard, challenging, not impossible. Just really, we have to go through this again. Really. You, you understand this is insanity, right? This is your mental illness uh, making things hard for others. Okay? So, let's be real clear about what's going on here. And it, it's kind of nice when I'm in the... <laughs> I have enough of my own pathology. It's really nice when I'm involved with somebody who is just completely off the rails. <laughs> it's just really easy. It's when I feel I've, you know, contributed to the problem that I go um, haywire. Um, but it's it was like that for this for this last time. Now um, the last couple of weeks, I have noticed that there about the, I would say three, maybe even four weeks. I've noticed resolution of some very very major things, and it has got nothing to do with me. Nothing. I finally have people uh, who've always been in my reality who are finally acting decent, and I have in I have situations in my life where really there is a there is a perpetrator victim kind of thing going on. That sort of uh, I don't know that sort of activity, and um, the perpetrator is being caught being caught up short and um, and getting what perpetrators uh, do everything to avoid getting. The worm is turning, in other words. The worm has turned. 
And so I'm really struck with how uh, my life is uh, improving because other people are getting their shit together. It's not all just me getting my shit together. It's other people finally, finally acting more decent. And uh, I don't think that it's just, you know, oh, I think I'll be more decent toward Kathy. No, it's, it's they're just changing. And they're realizing that they've made some errors in judgment in the past. And they've done damage. Literally done damage. And um, they're not doing it anymore. And they have it in their toolbox that they can do damage. It's actually their fallback, you know, move. And they're not doing it. In fact, they're doing the opposite. Well, it makes my life easier. Everybody who suffers around these people, it makes their life easier too. And I, I don't have I, I I don't have an explanation. I, I you know you every single day deal with someone's crap, and it's just their reality, and it it creates it creates a problem in in my reality. If their problem clears up. So does mine. So that's kind of neat. I'm also noticing that um, there's always been in my psyche since I was a girl this idea of um, a public persona and a, pu and a private persona. And um, through the years, I, I've understood that that's because I have a public self, and I, or I will. I didn't at the time and a private self and I and it was my job to figure out how to um, navigate this prior to having a really really big pr public self um, and uh, it's always been a conundrum um, what is the reality of a movie star they project this one reality and this one um, beingness and yet when they wake up in the morning and they they feel they've got to go poopy um, and they they're wondering you know about their their family that's a different reality and it's always fascinated me and now I'm really really getting it that there is uh, what I'm seeing in, in in my life is this removal of the consciousness of acquisition and consumption and it, I think that that is pretty much the consciousness that gets piped in through the TV set, through the, <laughs> when you're pumping gas, and through the mouths of your friends. If you're in the sort of mindset of, let's just say, dating, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that whole thing is quite predatory, and it's, I'm going to get something, and it's just, it's crazy, it's crazy town to me. Uh, because it's more of the the external uh, projection stuff, whereas being in a in a friendship or a relationship with someone, looking them in the eyes, uh, knowing that they would uh, they really enjoy this particular hobby, and at at a store you found a book about that hobby, or you found a trinket that you know they'd like, that is not the same as getting a boyfriend you see it, it's it's what I'm seeing is that there's being and there's there's doing but there's there's also really being authentic and being in the moment versus this plastic sort of different reality that um, I can see now is is it is very different from the uh, the true work and pleasure of being connected with individual human beings and in that space there's no human being who is lost completely there's no human being who's who's unless they declare themselves lost and <laughs> some do yeah <laughs> some do they declare themselves dead before they before their heart has stopped beating but what I'm saying is that um, this idea of um, of an outer and an inner reality, of a reality that people can and do comment on and make judgments about versus the experience. 
and this is this has been a seed of an idea, kind of a kernel. Um, but I can see now that really what matters to me and what is most significant and most fun is the stuff that can't, that creeps up on you, that happens automatically through the day. You don't even think twice about. That's real life to me. The plans, the um, memories, the expectations, that's not real. That's not real. And uh, it, it informs physical reality. It doesn't mean that I believe that the only thing that exists is what's, what's physical. That's not it. No. But it's, it's one thing to say I have a son quite another to look that son in the eye and tell him something meaningful that he might remember 20 years later. Keeping in mind fully that it's the things that we don't stress or put an exclamation point on that oftentimes triggers love, devotion, admiration, respect. It's an alchemy that we think we're, we're in charge of, but we're really not. We're really not. What other people feel about us is their business. And what they do about their feelings is indeed their business. And uh, if anyone has learned that lesson, dear one, it's me. This has been really a study in free will and uh, letting other people be. And standing, watching, and feeling sometimes great disappointment and great sadness. Just tremendous grief. And at other times feeling tremendous joy and relief and uh, release. And it's got nothing to do with their stance toward me, really, in the end. It's their stance toward themselves. But oftentimes I think when we begin to love ourselves more and, um, and we stop judging ourselves quite as severely, um, we realize just how effortless it is to, to give freely of ourselves and our resources. So now I'm gonna go, I guess I, you know, one thing that it really has changed for me is I, um, I went from being like in a full stop mode, just a, uh, and hey, I wasn't in charge of that, okay? <laughs> and now it's really the, the pedals to the metal and I'm, and I knew this, I knew this, I can remember saying it, I know, things are gonna really speed up. Wow, well, okay, it took a little bit of time. That's good. I needed a ramp up, but wow, fast. And, I mean, I used to at least have at least one day a week where there was no stimulation, no outside people, no movement, pure relaxation and being sort of fallow. And I realize now that may not actually be the most, uh, oh, I don't know, it's just not something that I have to continue. So there are a lot of, a lot of habits that I took up uh, to accomplish this particular project, and a lot of thinking of, you know, well, I'll deal with that later, I'll deal with that later, I'll deal with that later. Uh, it's later now. So that's what I'm dealing with now. And it really is a removal of the things that I put off, the removal of the things that uh, really don't, serve anymore and part of the function of, of this whole process has I, I, I'm, I'm not a hoarder but I don't uh, I, I have more stuff in my life than I than is significant to me and for a very long time I really had a hard I wanted to the only thing I wanted to do was get rid of the stuff that wasn't being used every day or wasn't absolutely loved and cherished by yours truly and I had trouble with that I had trouble and um, I kept hearing well that's because the identity isn't set yet and just you know just 
you don't exactly know what to keep and what to throw because you're not read you're not done yet it's just hang in there and so it's been, it was really fun to go through my wardrobe and get rid of I don't know it was like seven bags of clothing that um, just either I, I just I looked at it and said yeah well um, it's okay <laughs> and the idea part 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 of the idea now is uh, anything in my life you know anything in my life where I look at it and go yeah well that's okay I guess it'll do um, then that's something that I can I can improve and I want to improve because I don't I I don't want in the end to have in my inner life uh, inertia and for a long time I was inert because I was um, putting together a lot of stuff so and now that stuff is better put together I still have uh, days. Yesterday was a really hard day. We had a we had a tremendously big event occur on Thursday. That is um, life changing, and um, can finally prove does does prove to both my son and I that we are on the downhill side of a tremendous amount of pain and suffering. It, it was a, it was beautiful. It was incredible. And Friday was a tough day. And um, I, I don't ever anticipate retra con contractions because it's hard to anticipate that kind of pain. I don't like anticipating pain. Um, so it's always a little bit of a, oh crap, when that happens because it is painful to have, go through a contraction. To be reminded of the things that are limiting, that are that, that I hold, that are limiting, um, uh, incorrect, um, that create problems, the areas of my life that I'm not satisfied with, that's, that's, not, that's not fun. Um, but I... I I know that at the end of such a day, the idea is for me to get to the place where um, I really can, I really get it, that the idea is to love oneself regardless. That, you know, in the end, you, you, you got a pulse, you're loved by God, and um, there's a way out. The way out may be through, but there's a way out. And um, so this morning, it's really nice to have sort of a sense of... Uh, balance again and I repeat I report that because I think it's important to know I mean I think it's really uh, daft at this point to assume that you're just going to you know have a have a sweet sweet meditation and come home in your heart while in your body and and then everything's going to be ducky for the rest of your life it doesn't work that way not in my experience I have a peak experience and then I have to integrate it into my into my reality and my reality may be in opposition to this new truth. <laughs> and it's like the the new reality is like a chisel and I have to, you know, sort of use it on my old reality to get to a form that matches what's in my heart now because of this new reality. So that's kind of, you know, it's a destructive process and it's an active, dynamic process and it's one that involves others. And I'm so, so pleased to, um, to have loved ones who are helping me and I, I don't know, I would assume I'm helping them. But um, I have such beautiful people in my life who love me so much and um, boy, oh boy, is that mutual. And uh, so, anyway, so it's Pride Weekend, yeah. and I, I just want to say that through this process, it, we have been talking about going from outer to inner, or from, or really just staying in, dwelling within the inner truth. And so for me, it's just been a long time coming. I mean, I can remember going like six months ago, out of the blue, Sam saying, God, I wish you'd just find a girl. You're so gay. It's like, yeah, I know, I know. Just, just, just be gentle with me. <laughs> 
and um, and so it's been a very interesting process because um, I don't know I, I, I shared with my son this event that happened in the subway after we got back from Apo and it was really intense and I and I just finally just came home to a, to a very old very true reality for me a really good truth that makes me so so solidly happy and um, home and so I'll end that way I really think that for me um, the idea behind inner and outer or private life and, per and public life is what we hold is very true that we don't speak because we know we're going to be judged <laughs> it depends on how judgmental your peanut gallery is I had a I had people in my life who were highly highly caustically really just like wow are you sure you want to say that with that mouth it's just so mean that kind of judgment that was just like negating of worth over simple things um, and, and that's a lot to kind of regenerate from with it's just a blow every time you know you make a mistake and and you're worth nothing you make a mistake you're worth nothing well in my opinion life is for learning you're supposed to make mistakes it means that you don't understand and you're learning so that's good it does, it's not a bad thing it's a good thing but I've had this external very loud megaphone kind of your piece of shit kind of thing in my life um, and I've realized how how internalized it is I've talked about that and uh, so what I guess I'm getting at is that um, Stopping judging myself is really the beginning and end of peace for me. And when I am in a contraction, I notice I'm really, I'm, I'm not okay with myself. I'm not okay with what I'm doing or how I'm expressing or, um, or how things feel. And wh what I noticed uh, yesterday was that through this distress, even when it was happening, when it would, the, the moment of the, of the, insult and then the the like reverberation of ick I there's a part of me that knew everything was fine and I was never there before I always thought that when I was in the middle of a conflict or a crisis interpersonally it was the end or it could be the end it's not like that anymore and that, that's a really big deal I didn't have po object permanence is what I call it I really knew I knew if you have a conflict with somebody and they um, decide that you are no good they're gonna cut you off and I, I kind of um, I'm right now in a relationship that's completely estranged and probably will always be and I, so estrangement is something that I'm very aware of and and being dropped for no for without an explanation to never see that person again that's been a theme in my life since I was a child so this sudden death sort of fuck you um, high stakes relating really is something that I'm I'm I need to change I want to change it's not appropriate and sometimes it's highly highly appropriate I don't think that it's in a, everybody's toolkit because they don't need it because they can attend to stuff where they don't notice it or it doesn't cause them physical distress there are certain situations that I, I have to leave because I'm going to physically be ill if I stay in the situation or neurologically it is not good for me energetically it's not good for me and so I've had to learn that that's really okay to say to just bow out and have my own reasons and <laughs> if you're upset about it okay but I, I need to do what's right for me but th what I'm getting at now is that um, I understand that there's permanence 
in my love relationships. And um, then I want that. I prefer it. And before, I did not prefer being the, I, the thought of being connected to certain people without um, end. That, that, to, that with certain people, that, that to me is, um, that's, that is a thought that's enough to make me go haywire in a uh, spiral. It's not a good thing. <laughs> so um, it's very good for me to have that in my arsenal, but not as a, as a daily approach. So I've had to deal with that, trying to figure out how to work with that in this new energy. Because this energy, I feel, is much more forgiving. So I'll end um, by telling you what I sense is happening in the future, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so we've had a number of uh, very important celestial triggers recently. And I won't go into them. There are many sources. Uh, of Off the top of my head, the ones that I use uh, the most are uh, Kaipacha Lesher, um, and uh, Rick Levine for astrology. For energetics, uh, I use I, I listen to Magenta Pixie. Um, I want to start exploring Judy Satori again, but for right now, I I like the mechanical, the highly um, technical um, talk. That I like that kind of talk. I prefer Seth and more technical, scientific stuff, and I find. Magenta Pixie to be very um, esoteric in a way that I like. Uh, but there have been a series of, of big events going on, and there was, oh boy, at the beginning of this month, there was, I mean, I reported it. I, I was I was out for a whole day. I was not available for an entire day. That very rarely happens, but and I knew it was the energy, and I just um, I, I wanted to get up and cook. I wanted to do a lot of things, and no, you're going to be laying here, taking it in, which is what I did. Uh, that was, I think, on the 6th. I don't know, but it was a big, huge swell. There are going to be more of those, and there I see, what I'm seeing is that there's um, like a shimmery, pulsating energy that's that there was an opening and now that's just sort of all the time it's not like there's big poof, and then nothing poof, then nothing it's like this beautiful energy it's like white and I see it in um, uh, like rings kind of that uh, are hitting the earth and it's very beautiful and it's sparkly white it's sparkly white um, but then we've got the solstice which the thing is that a lot of people put their intentions onto the solstice, sometimes months in advance, sometimes years in advance. And so uh, the, one of the reasons that some celestial triggers are so potent is that people have put their a lot of their consciousness into them. So, and I, f I feel that usually the summer solstices and the winter solstices are like that. They're, people understand the the uh, what's going on and they like it and it, it you know, it works for them. So, of course, a, sol a solstice, a summer solstice, on the tail end of all of this and with all of us waking up, it's going to be a big deal energetically. It doesn't mean that it's pa jam-packed full of energy. Did we get a big, hey, guess what? On this particular day, you're all going to be laid out with energetic push. Not really. There was a little bit of warning, but... Um, but it wasn't like that. It just some people were on that track and they knew that they needed to lay low. And it, it was it had come through that the beginning of June was going to be a big deal. Um, and so now we've got the solstice. But then what I'm seeing, though, is um, that this energy does not stop. And it actually refines and it, and it increases in its um, the oscillation. The, the, the amperage keeps getting faster. And so it's good to just get used to the inundation because it's going to continue. Are there going to be swells, peaks, high moments? Sure. You bet. And um, I'm not going to prognosticate, but I do see that uh, what I've said before, that I do sense October is a, is a time of, of release 
and of settling and uh, really of like relief I can sense that just like oh god like night and day kind of relief and um it doesn't mean that September is going to be, you know, gentle. I think that September is, the, you know, the, always at the end of September. I keep hearing the 26th. But there's stuff going on at the end of September that will push into this different reality uh, that I sense as fall comes. And really, there's a, I just have a different body feeling when I think about the winter solstice. It really has a different feel. It feels really good. It feels um, contented and cozy. Um, quiet. That's certainly not the feeling I get when I when I uh, go to the summer solstice. It, it's just like almost like hairs on fire. And it, so it's like a 180. How do you get from hair on fire to to comfy and cozy? Some people call it work. Some people call it release work. Some people call it going through hell. Some people call it allowing, surrendering, saying yes. How you get there is how you get there. We're all going to be there. We're all going to get to the, in one form or another, we're all going to get to the winter solstice. I like that I can feel my body get more and more and more comfortable and quiet and at peace as the months pass. And the, the, just the whole countenance. And I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. I mean, in my life, I don't know. Do you? You might think you do. But I'm here to tell you, if you're convinced that what's in your little brain right this minute that's going to be happening in December is what's going to happen and nothing else, well, then you're wrong. And hanging on to one plan, this is not the time for that. That's, um, yeah, that's a setup for great discontent and anger. Um, and limitation because really things that are being blocked things that don't go things that that don't work out oh my that's what's blossoming into rosebuds for us so um, as always you know welcoming calamity with open arms well that's not normal is it it's normal to hide and to weep and to put on the hair shirt and feel bad. Um, and I do, sometimes. I do. feel sorry for myself. But less and less. All right, so me and Sunshine say thank you for listening. Um, I'm really glad I got to freestyle it. I really felt like it was time. I hope that you're having, uh, your experiences are, are, I hope that your experiences are um, bringing you home and uh, bringing you peace. From my heart to yours, namaste.